Welcome to the Cloud Plus Objectives Review. Let's go ahead and just review the objectives fairly quickly to get an idea of what you're going to be tested on on the exam. When it comes to objectives, there's probably no other organization that is clearer in objectives than CompTIA. So rest assured, you'll go into the exam knowing exactly what you'll be tested on and pretty much the subject areas under those domains about as clearly as they can give you. With that said, the areas that are covered will be configuration and deployment, security, maintenance, management, and troubleshooting. Let's talk about the first objective section. The first area is configuration and deployment. This is a fairly wide area. There's a lot of area that we'll want to realize um, before taking the exam. And what I mean is it's really a course focused on a general best practice approach. And it's not really a course going to be vendor specific. So you won't be tested on how you would deploy templates in AWS or Google Cloud, nothing like that. Again, when it comes to the objectives, 1.1, 2, 3, etc., clearly defined. I won't read them all to you, but I did want to provide some insight. We'll be covering uh, in the boot camp some of these areas. And for those that are interested, of course, in the full course that is available as well. The link will be in the description. But basically when it comes to config and deployment, it's really about understanding deploying, for example, a virtual machine and understanding areas that are important to set up and configure, for example. Now, this would be, for example, memory, CPU. This would also be around the networking. For example, why do we want subnets? Why do we need to make sure there's a firewall setting? Again, some of this is going to be pretty straightforward if you're in IT already. Some of it may be new as well. Another area that you'll be tested on will be how to uh, understand, for example, to measure your workload, how to uh, understand is that CPU taxed or is it not? When it comes to the section 2.0 security, this is 16% uh, of the exam. And of course, it, it doesn't look like there's a lot there for coverage as opposed to 1.0, but rest assured it is uh, tested fairly heavily. For example, we'll need to go in understanding when it comes to cloud security, what a VPN is, of course, why we want a virtual private cloud. We'll need to understand how we could define, for example, firewall rules. How do we mitigate issues? Another thing that uh, we'll want to know is understand why automation and, and um, orchestration can play a big deal in your cloud deployment. Another area, too, will be to understand how a firewall could play a role, but also other appliances, for example. Like if we deploy a virtual machine, we want to be aware of how we log into that virtual machine. We'll want to know if we're using SSH, we may want to set up what's called a bastion host, or what about if our developers go ahead and deploy on a virtual machine platform, let's say it's AWS or Google or Azure, doesn't matter, we'll probably need to have a way to mitigate any uh, concerns around those developers leaving the cloud and traversing the internet. For example, to go and uh, get a stock ticker price, they might have to leave, you know, let's say the application is financial, wants to go pull in a stock ticker price. Well, that can be done, of course, real easy, but we don't want to, uh, from a security best practice, give out our, for example, our cloud VM subnets or anything. So we want to use NAT as, as a way to mitigate issues. Now, 3.1 is around maintenance. What do we need to do to update, to manage? What's a rolling update, for example? How do we go in and make sure that we select the right type of storage? For example, an object storage, all the vendors have different levels of availability uh, or different levels of performance. Now, do we want to go in and also 
pay, for example, for additional regions and zones. We'll need to understand scenarios and then decide what is the best solution to meet that. Again, DR, business continuity, fairly straightforward. Now, Ford Auto, uh, again, is um, uh, fairly heavily tested as well, about 18%. And this area is more... Um, not so much, whereas maintenance is more fix it and keep it going and, and maintain availability, management's a little different. This is where we'll need to really understand uh, aspects around identifying performance issues or how to uh, spin up and spin down resources from a vendor neutral perspective. Why do we want an acceptable use policy, for example? For Another thing to think about is agility. How do we address that? SLAs, for example, service level agreements. One of the things to, to realize is we may need to re, uh, you know, realize that the cloud provider will not likely be able to provide 100% availability, uh, but of course it could be four nines, uh, you know, in, in a lot of cases or, or even less, 99.5%, uh, depends on the service. You know, it could be four nines, it could be less. Now, very few cloud providers have services that guarantee 100% uptime. A good example, though, is a Google Cloud. They do uh, provide 100% uptime on their DNS service, for example. And it comes to number five, troubleshooting. This is 22% of the exam. As you notice, it's fairly high compared to the ob other objectives. This is where we'll really need to understand what is going wrong and how do we address it. For example, if your developers try to SSH in and they're not able to log in via SSH, what could be the issue? Could it be a firewall issue? Could it be the ports aren't open? Uh, whatever that issue is. Another thing too we'll want to know going into the exam is of course some of the well-known ports that we'll need to look at, RDP, SSH, We'll need to also uh, consider some other ports like DNS uh, as well. And so that's the objectives review. Let's go ahead and move on to the next module.